<laughs> Clearly someone likes the spotlight a lot more than I do. Oh yes, ma'am. Okay. Hello, good morning. I'm sorry my camera angles are kinda tricky. Uh, we'll just leave it like this because we can. So, uh, I thought we would talk a little bit about what's been going on because, as you know, I've been posting sort of regular updates. Just talking about how I feel, you know, I, I like to call them video diaries because they, they feel like that. It's like I'm, you know, writing a little dear diary to myself. Um, <laughs> and if I seem like I'm in a good mood, I'm not. Um, I'm just not in the worst mood, okay? Okay, uh, so, what's been going on these past couple days, a lot of crying, a lot of stress, and it's all, I'm not going to say it's my fault because it's not, but I will say that it definitely feels like it's caused by my own brain. Okay, now... These past few days I've been very, very stressed, uh, mainly about school. Also, I just woke up and I have not done my hair yet, so don't look at me. I have been very stressed about school. I was currently, currently am, <laughs> in four classes. We have our last two real estate courses, uh, Japanese and English, and this is more classes than I've taken before. And I definitely think I could manage all four classes. However, when I'm not sure what I want to do with myself and I'm not sure how I feel, and it's very hard for me to decipher what's going on in my brain, it's really hard to think about studying or think about being productive in the slightest. And with that being said, it's definitely hard. Also, I'm sorry, that's my dog. It's definitely really difficult because getting out of bed, taking a shower, brushing my hair, brushing my teeth, washing my face, like typical hygiene is already difficult. Eating normal, consistent meals is very difficult. Drinking enough water has gotten easier but it's still pretty difficult and especially you know some days it's more difficult than others some days all of that stuff can be done really easily so adding new tasks is super stressful and very very mentally draining for myself and I know that other people feel this way because it's really hard to add another habit into your life and you know, some people will be like, well, it's it's school. You know, you've been in school your whole life. You should be used to school. But my school experience is a bit different from a lot of people's school experience. Um, you know, I went to preschool. I went to <laughs> elementary school. And... By the fifth grade, I knew that I was supposed to graduate in 2020. Like, I knew that that was when I was supposed to graduate. That's what I was told. That's what all of us were told. You graduate in 2020. You're a 2020 graduate. That's when you're going to graduate high school. And then middle school came, and I started doing a lot worse. Now, don't get me wrong. When I was in elementary school, I had a lot of bad things going on. My mother's disability was getting worse. My father um, got into a motorcycle accident. He got hit by a car and he almost died. So we love that. Um, and it, all of that really stressed me out when I was younger because I really didn't know how to process it. Um, and I, I stopped. I started using excuses for why I wasn't turning things in and then since all of that was happening and since my teachers knew that and my counselors knew that they were 
very lenient with me and I truly believe that I shouldn't have passed like elementary school. I don't think I was ready yet, but there I was and in middle school I sorry if I'm like hesitating a lot this is a lot of stuff to sort of talk about um, in middle school I was okay for the first year I was doing really well for the first couple of weeks and then I got switched into a different math class and I won't necessarily blame the teacher maybe it's just my learning style I don't know but I started failing and my mindset around failing is very very specific and it has been like this forever so all throughout middle school I started failing more and more and my teachers had to be more and more lenient and then I got into high school which I spent a semester in, a normal high school. And I'm gonna put a trigger warning here. I'm going to mention depression, suicide, uh, things of that nature, self-harm and all that. Um, so I just want to let you guys know that that is what's happening right now. So if that makes you uncomfortable, please leave. Please, just don't. There's so much, just don't, okay? Okay. So, when I was in high school, I told my friends that I was leaving for a different reason. I told them my parents wanted me to be homeschooled and they wouldn't let me stay in public school. That's what I was telling everyone and that was not true in the slightest. I, in all honesty, wanted to die. And I had been planning this for the past year, and one of my really good friends knew, and we had kind of a weird relationship, and she was very distant, not for our friendship, but for, like, she was just an emotionally distant person, so when I told her that by, like, that I wanted to, to die, she was just sort of like, okay, well, by the end of the year, by the end of the year. Turns out she only did this because that's what she would keep doing, is she would keep saying, yeah, I understand, but not yet, not yet. And then she'd give me one very specific reason, like, well, we have to go to the convention at the end of the year, so you can't until we do that, because I'm spending a lot of my time, and I'm spending a lot of my money, and I need your help with it, and I can't do it alone, right? So she would give me reasons like that to sort of stick around a little bit longer, but you know, I like that's that was the reason I left is I told my parents I want to be homeschooled and convinced them because naturally I always get what I want somehow. <sighs> and um, I was going to kill myself and I had definitely tried a couple of times. Um, I also used to self-harm was pretty pretty consistent for me throughout middle school into high school um, and because of this it, it started to become harder to let myself even physically put wounds on my body because putting those physical wounds on my body wasn't like gratifying enough for my brain so I started stockpiling my medications and never took them for my depression and anxiety and, and sleep problems. I just kept them and I had been saving them for like two years until high school, you know, and, and until I was going to end my life and I would take a lot at once because your eyes dilate and you feel really disgusting and you have jaw tremors, which now I know is just a symptom that I'm always going to have, but at the time it was the worst feeling in the world, and you wanted to throw up, and sometimes you did, and a lot of the time you just wanted to sleep it off, and you couldn't, and it was 
like thinking back on it, it's, it's a really terrible thing that I allowed myself to do. And I, I obviously don't, I don't, I would never recommend self-harm to anyone. Just, I just want everybody to get the help that they need. Um, but I will say that if you're thinking about things like that and you aren't sure if you want help or you aren't sure if you're making it up, I can guarantee you, you're not making it up. You're not doing it for attention. It's okay to get help. It really is. I didn't want help. I was forced into help. I didn't like that. Okay, so it was kind of, uh, for me it had to be my own choice or else it wasn't going to get any better. And now it's my own choice and I want things to get better. But high school was a crazy time. I ended up leaving that high school and I was homeschooled. And by the end of the year, my parents found out that I had not been doing any of my classwork, which they were supposed to be involved, but they were not. Then they put me into a private homeschooling program paid for by my grandmother. And they found out about a semester in that I had not been doing any of my work and I would not do any of my work. And the only reason I didn't leave and didn't decide to end my life was because of the most incredible human being that I have now that I can proudly call my boyfriend of almost five years um, but after all of that homeschooling that I was definitely not doing and not completing and not getting anywhere with they sent me to a charter school it was new and they were like, this is your last option. And I was like, okay. And I excelled. I did extraordinarily well until I got sick. Um, and I came in and I gave them a doctor's note for why I was gone for so long. And they told me that they did not accept doctor's notes and that I would have to come back to the school and restart the program. That system had since been changed a couple years later, but that's not the point. Um, so I left, and my parents were like, why would you do that? Just restart. And I was like, but my progress is gone, and I can't do that again. And I... My parents kept trying to find me different schools. My mother took me to one, and I immediately said, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I won't do it. And then I ended up going back to that charter school and again, excelling, doing really well. We had a different, they, they had like different administration, sorry, I couldn't find the words there. They had different administration and everything and I made some really good friends and I pushed those friends away and now I have those friends back and I'm, I feel like an asshole a lot of the time in my life. but. After this, I think I left when I was about 16 to work a full-time job. I was almost 17, but you know, and I worked that job. No, I was 16. I worked that job from 16 until 17. And then last, no, two years ago, oh God, I don't even know. It was at the beginning of, of the pandemic. I moved out into my boyfriend's house with his family and his mother was going to homeschool me like she's homeschooled all of her children. And I got very impatient and I wanted to move out and I knew the only way I would be able to move out was to move into some of my my family's properties, which is where I am currently living, which is, I'm so blessed for that. Um, and I went and I got my GED and we moved out and here I am in my apartment <laughs> um, and in college nonetheless and I graduated on time. I still managed to graduate in 2020 and I know that that was an extraordinarily long explanation of how my schooling life went with you know a few snippets in there <laughs> of other things. Um, but 
overall, I did not have a normal school experience. I did not learn to study. I don't know how. It's very overwhelming. It's very stressful. And my mindset when it comes to failure is, is like, oh, uh, it's so, it's so, I, like, why? Why do I do this to myself? But I basically wake up and I'm like, ooh, I'm super motivated. Let's, let's do this. You know, at the, at the start of the semester, I'm like, hell yeah, this is going to be the easiest semester of my life. I just got to study this day, this day, this day, this day for this amount of time and then I'll be completely fine and everything will go so well and then I'll turn in one thing a little bit later than I intended to and I'll get off course and then I'm like, hmm, that's a little, that's a little disappointing which causes me to go like, well then I can just procrastinate because clearly I can get it done by the very end of the day. Don't do that by the way. Don't. <laughs> Don't procrastinate. Don't be me. Um, <laughs> So then, after procrastinating until the very last moment, naturally some things will get behind and I won't end up turning them in. And if I miss a class or too many classes, then I feel guilty and I feel like I shouldn't go. <sighs> Why do I feel like I shouldn't go? Well, I feel like the teachers are going to sit there and judge me and tell me that I did a bad job, right? I'm so scared of judgment. I am so scared of not being perfect when it comes to schooling. You know, like, of course I want to make straight A's. Everybody wants to make straight A's, but I have my reasons and they're not very just, you know, they're very mentally damaging for me. So this has caused a lot of stress in wanting to continue living in not knowing what I want to do in the future and not knowing what to do with myself on on a daily basis and I know this is why people set goals and everything short term and long term but it's so incredibly difficult for me to even process what to like where do I start so starting in spring I will be leaving college and I will be, <laughs> uh, basically I'll be taking a gap year, which is not something I've ever had. And my boyfriend mentioned something that really sort of stuck with me. We've been working on getting my driver's license. I am 19. It's definitely weird, a weird time to get my license. And he said, you haven't had any normal experiences yet and I think you need to do that when you worked a job it was because you needed the money when you wanted to get yourself you know when you went to school you didn't <laughs> you know you went to other schools or you you had to take yourself in the morning and that stressed you out and when you had a job you weren't balancing school and work you were just working and you didn't do anything normal you didn't have a driver's license so you didn't have that sort of freedom to to go and do what you wanted and I think he's right I think a lot of the time and I know I know that my me that I crave the normal college experience like I have and I know like some people are like okay well that's unrealistic right it's unrealistic to expect that and I don't mean living in a dorm I just mean going to school on a campus which I haven't even done yet I haven't even been to my campus yet you know going to school on a campus sitting in a class taking notes in a class being present in your class and then you know having places to study on campus whether it's the library under a tree in a cafe you know you never you never know but you have those options and i always wanted that and i don't have that being home alone being scared to leave by myself being paranoid to leave by myself because i have to walk everywhere and i 
you know, I'm, I'm female and I would really uh, rather not get catcalled or kidnapped or anything and I I tend to expect the worst and that's okay and I'm excited to take a gap year I'm nervous because I don't know what my family will say um, I talked to my dad about it and he was very supportive he said you know you know what's what's best for you you know what you need and that was it also I just realized this is like in the frame, so I'm sorry. Um, so he seemed supportive. So my mother seemed confused. Uh, that I will have to have a job, and work for a little while, and just kind of do what I've never really gotten to do, and I think that's pretty, pretty cool. So. Again, thank you for coming to watch my 20 minute video about me just talking about my life and my nice little video diary. Um, if you enjoy this type of content, you can go ahead and subscribe or like or do whatever you want, honestly. Um, you can even leave me a dislike. If it's feedback, it's feedback and that's okay. Um, I know this video is sort of all over the place, uh, mainly because it's six in the morning uh, but I do appreciate you and thank you for being here and if there's any other type of content you want to see like daily vlogs or what I eat or you know if you want to see me challenge myself to get my my shit together I'm like please please let me know down below I really do appreciate it thank you and I will see you next time